Some of my fondest video game memories are from a little game you may have heard of called Lego Star Wars The Complete Saga. And when I was little, I played the crap out of that game. It was, and some would argue still is, the Star Wars experience. Until it wasn't. Who are you? I'm no one. Then, years later, when the ending of the Skywalker Saga, as it was dubbed, was imminent, at E3, TT Games and WB Games announced LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, a new game that would tell the story of all nine main entries in the Star Wars franchise in a classic LEGO fashion. Being the fan I was of the complete saga and LEGO games in general, I knew I had to get this. I watched this game like a hawk, keeping up with updates on development, the constantly shifting release date, trying to grasp the tiniest piece of info about this game leading up to its release. Then after years of delays, it finally released in April of 2022. After school, hauled over to Best Buy, finally made it home, waited for my dad to finish watching golf of all things, installed the game, booted it up, and I was welcomed to this. I am going to play the entirety of the opening cutscene here, so I will leave the timestamp to skip ahead if you don't want to see the opening cutscene. I was in love. I started with The Phantom Menace, obviously, played through the prequels, the originals, and the first two sequels because I still cannot bring myself to play The Rise of Skywalker, and now I'm dabbling in the intimidating amount of open world content. It seems endless. Every time I get a kyber brick, I feel like I make great progress till it displays my total count on screen, and then I look at it and I'm like, I thought we had a shot. There's just too many of them. But I wouldn't trade it for anything. In fact, I love it so much that I'm already sad for the day when it ends. I am having so much fun with this game. Now, I know I could just make a new save file whenever I want, but it will never be the same as that first time. Touching down on Coruscant in The Phantom Menace and looking out at the sprawling city, exploring the Jedi Temple, Palpatine's office, the nightclub, Dexter's diner, hell, even Padme's apartment, it will never top the first time it happened. Fighting a Star Destroyer as it comes out of hyperspace will never be the same. It is an unforgettable experience. So what is it that made this game great to me? Well, that's because it's a love letter to Star Wars. Every corner of this game is filled with passion and care for this franchise. Everyone who worked on it cared. The first time I walked around Tatooine as Luke Skywalker and an old man Obi-Wan Kenobi was the moment I truly felt this. The homestead is gorgeous and I could have spent hours walking around the Junlin Wastes near Luke's house, but then I took the land speeder into Mos Eisley. 
Shops line the streets. Citizens are everywhere. There's puzzles around every corner, all kinds of things to force and destroy. People to talk to, Banthas to use Jedi mind tricks on. I looked up and saw capital ships floating in the sky. Did you know they put the Jawa huts in this game? It was a moment that was deleted from the original 1977 film, but they decided to put it in this game as a little Easter egg. I couldn't help myself but take a picture the first time I entered the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Ever since I was little, I've wanted to wander the streets of that planet, and this is the closest I have ever gotten and may ever get. This was the Instagram post I made upon entering. Every corner of the open world has so much care put into it. I've only fully explored five planets at the time of filming this because there's so much stuff to find. Those planets are Kashyyyk, Yavin 4, Geonosis, Kamino, and Cantonica. Every single one of them was great in their own way. But enough about world design. How is everything else? These guys did the story of the Skywalker Saga so much justice. They respect the source material, poke fun at some of the things people don't like, reference memes and silly dialogue all the time, and sometimes I would argue they even do certain things better than the films. The fight against Captain Phasma in this game is actually a fight. It's not just two highly trained soldiers swinging sticks at each other for 15 seconds before one of them falls down a hole and dies. And the boss battles. Oh my god, the boss battles. These might be some of the best boss battles I've seen in a game in a while. The way the combo system in the game complements them works so well, and the way they use the open world environments to fuel the levels is an absolute masterclass in game design. I like to single out Battle of the Heroes here. The way Mustafar is designed to work for that level, and then the way the level runs through that world is immaculate. The Luke and Vader fight in The Empire Strikes Back is the single greatest level in any LEGO game ever. And keep in mind, they've been making these things for decades at this point. And the duel between Yoda and the Senate I am the Senate was so good that I was sad when it ended. That was a level I've been wanting to play for 15 years, and I could not have asked for it to be any better. Another nerdgasm moment for y'all. The other day, I was flying around in Slave 1 as Ahsoka and the Mandalorian. The Venator came out of hyperspace, so once I boarded the ship, I switched to Yellow Eyes Anakin Skywalker and scarred Palpatine. How it was before Anakin fell into the lava on Mustafar. How it was when Order 66 went out. How it would have been if Obi-Wan didn't kick Anakin's ass. And I cleared the ship with these two. And even though ship takeovers aren't challenging in any way, something about using these two to seize it had me feeling like this. <laughs> Space is its own monster in this game. It's not as huge as I wish it would be. I would have loved if the entire map was connected and you could fly from Endor to Kajimi seamlessly without having to open the map and fast travel, but I can understand why they decided not to do that. Instead, what we get is the ability to fly in the space above the planet. What I thought would exist just so you can fly the Millennium Falcon around was actually full of stuff to do. A comet filled with kyber bricks flies in the space around every planet waiting for you to destroy it. Rebellion pilots will fly around in an X-Wing asking for help in defeating a group of bounty hunters after their cargo. Space battles will randomly occur that you can take part in for a hefty reward and sometimes races will show up. I was baffled by the sheer amount of side content in this game. They really gave players everything they could ever want. And the character grid is the most in-depth, insane shit in this game. They separated the character grid into classes, with each class having unique abilities that make every single one of them useful. And on top of that, each class has their own upgrades. A lot of them have their own combat style, or they share it with a couple other people, but so many characters fight exactly how they fight in the films. There are 380 characters, and it feels like 93% of them were handled with care. And what's even better is that sometimes characters will have voice lines that play off each other if you pick a nice combo. For example, if you spawn in Darth Vader and Kylo Ren, Kylo will try and fail to keep his composure around his grandfather. And the best one, is easily the one that occurs if you pair Child Anakin with Darth Vader. Whoa, that's a cool suit. Where can I get one of those? Patience, child. Patience. I love the characters so much that I wanted more of them. 
I don't even play as all of them, but there were some that I still wanted. I really wanted Ahsoka Tano, so instead of just buying the Mandalorian Season 2 character pack, I made the smarter choice of buying all the character packs. And talk about handled with care and appreciation. Ahsoka may be the best designed character in the game, and she isn't even in the base game. There are no characters in the Skywalker Saga with two lightsabers, meaning that Ahsoka needed her own moveset. They had to create new lightsaber models, a new lightsaber color, new combat animations, and a new running animation just for Ahsoka because yes, she runs in the game the exact same way she runs in the Clone Wars and Rebels. The only thing that would have made this character cooler is if she had voice lines. Not like it would have been difficult, Ashley Eckstein would have come back in a heartbeat to record some lines, and they missed out on the chance to have Matt Lanner and Ashley Eckstein have conversations again as Anakin Skywalker and Ahsoka Tano. And you can't tell me that Grogu closing his crib when Mando raises his blaster isn't the cutest thing you've ever seen. The reason this game is so good is because it was made by people who give a shit. It was made by people who are passionate not just about video gaming but about Star Wars, a game made by fans for fans. The reason this game got delayed three years is because they cared so much that they weren't willing to rush it. Every corner of the game is handled with care. Every level, upgrade, extra ship, capital ship, planet, side mission, race, combat encounter, and most of the characters are handled with care. TT Games did what Lucasfilm didn't do with the sequels. They didn't shit on what they had in a rushed attempt to put out a product they knew people would eat up. They respected the source material, they respected what came before, they respected the fans, and most importantly, they respected Star Wars. Now, if you don't mind, I have a game to get back to.